Morning folks, Kevin Ross, uh, Crossfire Defense Academy and Range. We're gonna go over step two in the five step video that we did over ways to improve your shoot and what you need to look at and how you need to improve your shoot down range. Step two is gonna be achieving proper master grip and support hand grip on the gun. First thing we need to do, whether you're left or right handed, is establish that master grip or that strong hand grip. First thing we want is to get the web of the hand as high in the tang of the grip as possible. If we've got it as high as possible, we've got little upward movement of the gun. The muscle's not going to want to rise because we've got it trapped and it cannot. If I put a gap in between the tang of the grip and the web of the hand, now it's got a place to go to. So simply just choke your hand up on that web of the grip in the high, as high in the tang as possible, and that'll prevent that muzzle rise on that weapon, help you mitigate a little bit of that muzzle rise. We grip the weapon. We want to have our finger straight alongside the frame, the lower frame, not near the slide around the trigger, hugged up right alongside the lower frame. Our fingers are going to grip around the pistol grip of the weapon, and we're going to pull tension from front to rear. Our, support, or our strong hand thumb is going to be up and out of the way so that the support hand can access the left side of the weapon. All right. One other key thing that I want shooters to look at is, if able, depending on your hand size and your frame and build, is getting that slide aligned with the bone in your forearm. A lot of shooters will adjust their grip to where that slide is over the top of the knuckle or deep in the well of the hand. If we can align it with the bone in the arm and keep it that way, we're going to mitigate more recoil because we're using our arm and it's recoiling straight down our skeleton, right down that arm and all that mass in my upper arm to help control and aid in recoil management. Now getting the support hand grip. Like I said, we need to get that strong hand thumb out of the way. To get your support hand on, simply make a knife hand, thumb up, and we're going to index that trigger guard right on top of that knuckle you pop people in the face with. All right, we're going to simply fold our hand around just like we're crushing a racquetball. Fingers on our support side are going to grab the finger grooves that our strong hand makes and use them like grooves on the pistol grip of a weapon. And then we are going to attempt to get butt-to-butt -butt contact with both of those hands to where no black of the grip is showing. We want to control as much of the lower surface of the weapon as possible. The reason why is the frame doesn't move, the slide has to move to do proper cycling and operation of the gun. Anytime we index a thumb or something on there and that slide moves, instinctively we hop that thumb. So we want to put it on a surface that that hand will not move or have to move. If we properly index both the strong hand and support hand on the weapon, you should have your support hand thumb and your strong hand trigger finger be about equal length. The easy way to check it is simply when you're at the ready, is just look down at your hands and make sure that they're solid in the proper place. If we've got the support hand thumb too far forward, we got no grip covered. If we've got it back, revolver style grip, thumbs tucked, nothing supporting the left front side of the weapon. All right. Another problem we also run into is people will attempt to get that and they will drop that thumb or what we call tucking the strong thumb. When they tuck that strong thumb, the only thing touching the gun and support hand is the fingers on the strong hand side and the thumb on the forward pad of the lower frame. All of the rest of the grip is not taken up. We need to get that thumb out of the way so that we can control as much of the left side of the gun as we do on the right. We're controlling the right side of the gun. We got the back strap, the front strap, right side of the weapon. When we control it with the support hand grip, we want the exact same amount of coverage that we do as with the strong hand. We want that as close to the weapon as possible. If we put anything in between it, such as a tuck thumb, we're going to lose that control of the weapon. Also, once we tuck a thumb or trap a thumb, you have the problem of accessing the controls, such as a slide lock and trapping it down and locking it back every time it shoots or potentially failing to lock open on the last round. We do see a lot of that happening out here at the range facility. Once we get our hands placed, we're going to roll that thumb forward and that thumb is going to trap on the top. That keeps it away from the lower frame, controls on the side of the gun, and that when we drive out and present the weapon forward, locking our elbows, having thumbs forward also helps us lock our wrists. We want to lock those wrists so that we decrease the amount of muzzle flip and rise that we're going to get. If we go thumbs high, that's like having your wrists using them as a hinge. It's going to want to rise with it. Simply rolling that hand forward, that thumb forward, and locking that one forward 
when we present and drive the gun down range, it's going to lock those wrists and present, prevent that upward movement. 